Hello, I am Joe McDonald and this is Big Mac's Battle Blog. Been a while, how are you? So, oh, Big Mac's Battle Blog now in 4K because I bought myself a new phone because my old one died. So yeah, how are you guys? Um, <coughs> about the time the last video went up, I went on a mission that involved a speedboat and going over to uh, one of the islands in the Dnipro. And um, I've done that sort of mission before. It wasn't a particularly rough week. I mean, you know, we got on the speedboat, we landed. As soon as we landed, we were getting mortared. Uh, through the course of the week-ish, we were there. Um, we were getting shot at by uh, tanks and mortars and grads. We had like a whole volley of grads. Well, not a whole volley, like about a half volley, like 20 grad rockets landed everywhere around us. But the fucking position we were in um, gave me yet another bit of a TBI, but I was wearing my active ear pro. So it wasn't too bad. Only made me feel all depressed and stupid for like two two weeks after that, and then we exfilled, and um, the team that uh, replaced us uh, had my French mate in. They had a much rougher week. Uh, they were pinned down by sniper fire. They had volleys of some kind of incendiary rockets come in. Whether they were um thermobarics or magnesium rounds i don't know but uh yeah no no one likes be having flame weapons used against them and no one likes being pinned down by a sniper and for whatever reason it took like two and a half three days for us to get some fire support to knock out the snipers or deter the snipers who were who were pinning them down and then when they left, it was even more dramatic. You know, they had fucking drones overhead, uh, you know, fucking being mortared and, and automatic grenade launchered, the boat having to fucking zigzag as they left, you know. And, yeah, pretty awful week, really, for both concerned. And it also came to... I'm not going to go into detail about this, but um, it is worth mentioning in a broader sense. It came to light that we had some pretty serious um disciplinary problems uh with some of the guys in our unit and uh well if you know you know so um those problems have been dealt with by our command now but uh it wasn't good not good at all and um my french mate wants to leave now which i'm uh, i'm pretty pretty depressed about really um but it's his decision and i don't blame him for it because i, I thought you know i brought him here because he's calm intelligent speaks russian is a trained soldier and he's just got treated like shit by some of the guys here basically and it's been yeah it's not not what i expected at all um so yeah but anyway then after that, I basically, you know, possibly under a state of confusion and TBI-related depression, I had a little bit of a... I'd say I had a fucking breakdown. Like, I... I if you remember from the early videos, I did... I said mentioned I did dry January. Well, I did dry February and dry March as well. I didn't touch a drop of alcohol for fucking three months, you know. And... um then at, while while Phil was on the island, and then after he came back, I hit the fucking bottle hard. Got myself into a little bit of trouble. Got disciplined for it, but hey, I'm I'm not a fucking PR soldier. I'm not a propagandist, and I'm not the perfect human being. But uh, yeah, you know. On the other hand, I'm back on the dry now. But uh, yeah, well, I then I went to Odessa. Um, I had 10 days leave in Odessa, um, was quite nice. The area I was, it's funny, the, 
it seemed like there's no war in Odessa. And then four days after I left, uh, some of you may have seen that I was in this area where there's what they call the Harry Potter castle. Same with some friends there. And uh, the uh, an ice cander, which is like an intercontinental ballistic missile, loaded up with cluster bombs. And I didn't know they had that variant of them. I thought it was just one big bang or nukes. But an ice cander full of cluster bombs completely fucking destroyed uh, the Harry Potter castle. And um, I'm just putting a fag out uh, cigarette for the Americans. And, uh, and yeah, you know, um, there's absolutely, I think I was probably the only soldier at all within a square mile of that area. So, you know, flagrant attacking civilian targets, um, for, for terror, for no, no tactical military reason whatsoever, you know, cluster bomb in a city, what are you trying to achieve, you know, especially the touristy, the only people are there are like, you know, restaurant owners and, and the kind of people who live in, in managed apartment buildings, you know, so no fucking soldiers whatsoever. The rent's too high. Um, so, yeah, been back in Kherson for a little while. Um, haven't really felt motivated to do anything. I also managed to fall over on holiday, break a fucking rib with the dog. Um, so I got like an extra 10 days off, uh, which is kind of nice. You know, I didn't actually break the rib when I fell over. I got back to curse on, woke up coughing in the other night and I coughed so hard. My fucking or probably already damaged rib, um, cracked. So then I was just in absolute agony and I went to the hospital the next day and it's broke like right in the middle, you know, like right down my side under my arm. So like the worst fucking place for it really. But it's on the mend, um, so much I'm still technically broken, but I'm back in work now, I'm off to work tonight, um, so yeah, and uh, that's about it. Um, situation, it's kind of quiet in Kherson at the moment, but we're losing hard in the East right now, you know, I wouldn't say we're losing, but things are very very tough in the east right now and we're waiting for the hammer to fall here you know we're making all the preparations we can but uh yeah yeah things don't seem too optimistic at the moment you know um i think one of the problems the whole ukrainian army's got is exhaustion and it doesn't matter how dedicated you are to the cause. If you've been an active frontline soldier with, you know, for for over two years in a war like this, and you've only had 20 or 30 days off a year in those times to go and see your family, and maybe where your family lives is still an area of Ukraine where shells and rockets and missiles fall then the psychological backlash off that i think is starting to become apparent so i've spoke to friends in units up in the north i've spoke to friends in units in the east in the middle and i've spoke to other friends in units down here in the south and everyone's exhausted and it is very very difficult to maintain discipline and motivation and determination under these conditions. So, yeah, I'm really hoping that this rotation of units happens, that the new mobilised guys come in, because, you know, the, the average age of a soldier in Ukraine is 43, all right? And the younger generation, you know, if you're a young Ukrainian listening to this and you're not already in uniform, well, it's time to man up and do your bit, because... These 43-year-olds and 60-year-olds, the USSR generation and the post-USSR generation, are fighting for your future. They've already had their lives, you know. They've already got married, had a kid, had a house, got a trade. They're fighting for your future. And um, every time you go to Lviv and Kiev, it's full of fit young guys 
swanning around in new clothes like they haven't got a fucking care in the world. You know, and uh, I fucking hated seeing it in Odessa. I hated seeing it. Why aren't they in fucking uniform? You know, I'm not like some of them. You know, we need civilians, especially like middle class, educated, high earning civilians who are working in tech and all that kind of stuff. We need civilians to to continue uh, uh, for Ukraine. But uh, when you see all these guys working in fucking coffee shops and restaurants, well, there's plenty of teenage girls who could do that, mate. You know, um, so, yeah, if you're a young Ukrainian. It's time for you to come and do your bit if you don't fancy living under a dictatorship for the next 20 years. And if you're a, U a young Ukrainian man aboard as a refugee, come back, you fucking coward. Come back and do your bit because we're all getting damn sick of it. And why should we be fighting for the likes of you? Why should you keep your Ukrainian citizenship, right, when you when you've just ran away and left your dads and your granddads to do your fighting for you? So, yeah. Anyway, I'm not in a fucking good mood. I've got a broken rib and I'm tired and I'm fed up and I'd rather not fucking be here, but I still am. So, yeah. Anyway, it's goodbye from me, Joe McDonald of Big Max Battle Bogs. And uh, as always, to our Russian and Vatnik listeners and to the fucking Ukrainian, young Ukrainians who haven't bothered to come and sign up yet and are hiding out in Poland and England, Idina Hoyzer Looper. <laughs>